This is CPM Calculus Chapter 2, Number 84. So here we're asked to write a Riemann sum for a general function f of x. Okay, so this is just anything could be f of x, right? Um, to estimate the area under the curve of f bound by the curve and our x-axis between 2 and 5. So if we were to draw that out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 2 and 5, wherever our function is, we want to look at the area between 2 and 5, right? So we want to estimate using n left point or left endpoints of equal width. So for part A, we're told, well, what if n is equal to 3? Three rectangles. So that means, right, what three rectangles means is we're going to chop this area into three rectangles. Well, here's one, here's one, right, here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, right? So three would just be what? So to, to write this down, we say the area of our function bounded by our x-axis between 2 and 5. And remember, we're estimating, right? So it's approximately, use our squiggly approximation, not our equal sign. It's approximately, so we know the area of a rectangle is equal to base times height. So what is the base? The base, if we break this into three, well, we know our total distance from two to five. Total distance is from two to five is five minus two, which is three. Okay, so if we break that three units up, right? If we break that three units up into three rectangles, each one is going to have a base of 1 then, right? So for 3, the base is going to be 1. So here from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4, from 4 to 5. Okay. And we want to use the so we want to use the left endpoints, right? So that means each rectangle that we're looking at, we're going to look at the point here on the left and make that the height. The point here on the left of this rectangle, so that's the first one. Point for this rectangle, we're going to use this point, make this the height, right? And for this rectangle, we'll use this point and make this the height. So, left endpoint just means using the height of the left point on the base. Okay. So, base times height, we're going to basically have B. 1 times h1 plus we have 3, so b2 times h2 plus b3 times h3, so three rectangles. So that becomes the base we know is 1, right, times the height is our function at 2, so f, whatever it is, the input now is going to be 2, right? Over here, the input's 2. Over here, for this rectangle, the input is 3. So base, again, is 1 times our input of 3, plus the base is 1 times the input of our function at 4. Okay. So how can we write this using Riemann sums? Well, we just use our summation, sigma notation. We want to go f of something, right? And we want to start at, let's just use k equal to something and stop at something else. So one on the outside, right? We could write one times this, but that's implicit, so we could leave that out. And we want to go from two to three to four. So I can write it in a couple of ways, and I want to show you them. So I could say this goes from just k, and k then starts at 2 and goes from 2 to 3 to 4, right? So that's one possible answer, right? Or I can say that it starts at, oops, it starts at 0, and if this were to start at 0, right, 
then we had to add 2. 2 plus k. So our initial value is still 2, and we'll go from 0, 1 to 2. 0 to 2. Right? So this would be at k equals 0, f of 2, f of 2, at k equals to 1, then be f of 3 plus at k equals to 2, f of 4. So this is the same as what we want here. So this is another possible answer for part A. And in fact, there are an infinite number of possible answers. And um, so using one of these is fine. If you found another solution, that's fine too. As long as it's going to equal to f of 2 times 1, or we don't need to write the 1, plus f of 3 plus f of 4. Okay, so this is the answer for, or these are the two possible answers for part A. Okay, so for, for part B, we have nine rectangles. Okay, so again, we, ha we go from 2 to 5, and now we want to split it up. Whatever it looks like, we want to split it up into nine rectangles. Okay, so again, the distance here is three units. And now to split it up into nine rectangles, so each width or the base of the rectangle is going to be three units divided by how many rectangles is three. So that's simplified to be one third. Okay, so we know the base of each rectangle is one third. Okay. So let me say this, the area of our function between x and our function between x equals 2 and x equals 5 is approximately, and here we have our summation notation, we want to start at some value and stop at some other value, so let's use the, um, the variable um, j. And we want to basically multiply one third times the height, oops, one third times the height of our rectangles. So again, the left endpoint, we're going to start at our height of two, right? And then each width is going of a rectangle is going to be one third. So then we're going to go from two to two and one third to two. So it goes from 2 to 2 and 1 third to 2 plus 2 thirds to 2 and 3 thirds, which is 3, and so on. So we're going to start at 2, right? And then we're going to add 1 third each time, or 1 third times j. Okay? So this is going to make us start at j is 0, right? And we want to go from j0 to 1 to 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Well, we want to stop at j is 8, actually, because starting at 0, we want 9 rectangles, right? And when j is 8, when j equals to 8, we're going to have f of 2 plus 1 third times 8, right, which is equal to f of 2 plus 8 thirds, which is f of, well, 8 thirds is um, 2 plus 3 goes into 8 2 times, so it's 2 and 2 thirds, right? Or f of 4 and 2 thirds. So that's right at the, our last rectangle right there. And since we're using the left endpoint, we're never going to use f of 5. So this is how we want it to end. And that is our approximate area um, using nine rectangles. Okay, so again, we're just multiplying the base times the height of each rectangle, and we have nine of them. And just like in the first one, we could have started at one third, and we could say it's going to equal to, um, we can start, can we start at two? Can we write this and start at j equals to two? and ends at um, 2, then we have to go from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2 to 10, right? Because we want 9 rectangles and 10 um, 
the difference here is 8, but then we're going to start at 2, so that will make 9 different numbers. And we want to start at 2, so we're going to be doing 2 plus 1 third, and instead of J starting like that, we want it to start at J minus 2. So if you were to start at 2 and go to 10, you would have to change in our height this right here. Okay, so let's think about that. If j is 2, we plug j in as 2. We get 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 times 1 half is 0, so we just left with 2. So f of 2 is our first height of the rectangle, right? Um, our second height is going to be um, j is 3, so 3 minus 2 is 1, so we're just adding in 1 half. Actually, I made a mistake. This should be 1 third, right? because we just want to copy this and change j or what we're multiplying by one third okay so we're going to add one third each time until we get nine rectangles so this is another possible answer and i'm just showing you that there are an infinite number of possible answers but it's good to have just the consistency of always starting with zero or one or two just something small so um you can just see a pattern it's easier okay so that is for these are two possible answers either one's okay or you can have a different one for nine rectangles so finally in part C we're asked what about 300 rectangles 300 rectangles so again we're going from 2 to 5 right and now we're gonna fit 300 rectangles or wherever F is you know wherever that is um, and so we're going to approximate our area. And we're going to start, let's use the variable k. We're going to go from k equals 0 to 299, right? Because we want 300 rectangles. And our base is going to be what? Well, to calculate the base, we look, well, that's 3 units. 3 units, so the base is equal to our 3 units divided by how many rectangles, which is 300, and that's equal to 1 over 100. So our base is 1 over 100, and we're going to multiply that by our height, which is f of, and we're going to start at 2, and then each time add 1 100. 1 100 times k, right? So at first, this is going to cancel out and it's just going to be f of 2, and then next, when k is 1, we're going to multiply by 2 plus 1 over 100. When k is 2, our height is going to be f of 2 plus 2 over 100, and so on. Okay, so again, oops, I want to make sure I use the approximation symbol instead of equals because we're estimating the area. Okay, so this is how we estimate the area in general using 300 rectangles of some function between 2 and 5. Okay, so this ends CPM Calculus Chapter 2, number 84.